Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Yahweh Ya'ala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, grace, mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. As you know, today is a day of mourning um, for those that know the truth and a day of celebration for those that believe a lie. As we know, uh, today is um, the day in Babylon known as Thanksgiving, uh, which many people uh, celebrate and commemorate the time when the pilgrims and the uh, North American Indians, um, who they were called after this place was changed, as we know that they were the children of Israel uh, from the northern kingdom that had settled in this land, and they were uh, victims of you know a great atrocity, uh, one of the you know biggest genocides ever recorded in human history, and you know unfortunately. You know, a day like this just shows you that many of our people are still uh, really asleep. And no matter how much our people complain about, you know, oppression and things that go on, they're still, you know, locked into this society and they're still stuck in the matrix um, of this great whore that is known as uh, Babylon the Great in the scriptures. And, you know, unfortunately, this is going to continue going on until the time of the end, because we know in these last days there will be scoffers that will continue to scoff at the coming of the Lord and not believe that it's going to happen in their lifetime or it's not going to happen at all. And there will be increasing amount of rebellion among our people, um, as we see unto this day, until the time when those that did not believe are destroyed and, um, you know, and destroyed, you know, uh, you know, according to the scriptures in eternal damnation. So we have to fight and continue to put up the good fight of faith and strive for the truth unto death. You know, this is the time in which, you know, I called for, you know, new believers, the gauntlet. Okay. And the gauntlet um, is really going to be a, you know, time to test your faith. And I always say that for new believers, especially, you know, or you, you, you know, some of you brothers and sisters that have been around maybe only for like a few years, you're going to get major resistance from your family members during this time, from your friends, your coworkers during this time, you know, and they, if you want to stand up for the Lord and stand up for the truth, you will um, have to face this if you have family members that are still, you know, in this. Now, some of them are going to be, you know, allow you to do your own thing and respect, you know, what you say and what you believe, but most of them will not. And most of them will challenge you and will try and cause you to go off, will try and shame you, guilt you, insult you, okay? And they're going to try and make you feel like you're missing out or you feel like you're a bad person. And many people who want to please, uh, you know, the people in their family, the people in their life more than the most high, they will fall, okay? And they, this is usually the season when a lot of them fall away uh, because they don't like the fact that they have to stand up for the truth and they, they don't want to basically be at odds with their family. OK, so um, let me go ahead and just give you a quick, you know, definition of the word gauntlet. And we're going to go down to the second noun right here. And we're going to look at this uh, be a lying series assemblage. OK, one that poses some sort of ordeal. Now, look at this right here. The ordeal is what? A severe trial. Okay. And this is what usually is going to happen. It's going to be a severe trial. Okay. That you're going to be facing. Which basically is in the scriptures that when you get into this thing, you will be facing a trial of your faith. All right. To prove that you are worthy. All right. Of everlasting life. So you see here in the sentence, it says, ran the gauntlet of criticism and censure. And that's what's going to happen during these times. The hardest time for new believers, and that's why you have to stay prayed up and stay locked in with other like-minded brothers and sisters that can help get you through this time. Okay? This is the reason why when you have these people that are, you know, call themselves no campers and they don't want to fellowship with anybody, these people be eating, okay, turkey, right, with greens, beans, okay, ham, you, you name it, they eating it. Okay, they eating that pie. A lot of them are doing that, man. 
And if you go through your Instagram and you see some of these followers that talk about they Hebrew and they this and they that, okay? And, you know, you go through their Instagram story, you're going to see turkey. You're going to see all kind of, of, of stuff in there going on there. You got a lot of people that's doing that today, okay? Because they could not stand up. Even though they know it's a lie, they're going to be in there eating that Thanksgiving dinner, okay? That's just what it is. And really from this time, really from so-called Thanksgiving all the way to, to New Year's, that is a big gauntlet. That is a gauntlet. That is a severe trial that many people will be going through because you are going to have to deal with Christmas if your people was raised as Christian. And that is probably the hardest time because one, you're expected to not only give gifts, you're expected to be around your family, you're expected to say Happy, Merry Christmas, some of y'all are going to be expected to make, to do de decorations, you know, put up a Christmas tree, we've been through that, I've been through that, I've been in arguments, you know, with family over the years over this, you know, I had a big argument with my old man years ago, when he knew for years I wasn't celebrating it, he told me to help him put up a Christmas tree, and I said, I'm not doing it. And I, and I told him why I'm not doing it, that it's a pagan, it's Babylonian, read Jeremiah 10. And he was upset at me and saying, I don't know what's gotten into you. So you're going to receive that criticism. Okay. You're going to receive that criticism. You're going to be ups upset. I talked to my aunt even the other day. My aunt the other day was telling me about how when I stopped celebrating these holidays, how my dad would talk to her. This is his sister, his younger sister, which is my aunt. And about how pissed he was at me for not celebrating these holidays. I just had a conversation with her about two weeks ago. So a lot of brothers and sisters, y'all going to go through this. And you're going to need to lock in the people that can encourage you to help you get through this trial. You know, if you have people that are in your area on those days that you know uh, that are brothers and sisters in the faith or even a couple hours away. Maybe on that day you go over, you go on these certain days, you go over there. So that way you don't got to be around your family just so you can skip the talk and all that stuff that goes on. They're going to be expecting you to buy presents. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to give in? Are you going to go buy them presents for them? Okay? Are you going to buy them presents for them? So we actually have a time of gift giving, which is going to, which is the Feast of Dedication, all right, which will be coming up in the next uh, so-called month or so where you can do that. But that's for people that believe. You could tell them about that instead. But don't give in to these people because this is how your trial, your faith is being tested. Okay, you're being tested in these days, not only by the heathen of the of the other nations, but those that are heathenish in their mind among our people, including your own family. Okay, and then you got New Year's, which is easier to probably get around. But are you going to send that reply text and say Happy New Year, all right, to your your old friends Okay, that are in the world or your 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 family members when they hit you with the New Year's, are you gonna say that? Are you gonna go out to a, a a New Year's party, all right, and have a good time? Those are the things that you gotta ask yourself. Are you willing to stand up for these things? Because this is what you, this is what you have to show. This is this is just a small thing of what you have to show of your faith. So right now, many of y'all are gonna be going through a gauntlet, and it's probably started today for many of y'all. And if you were not prepared mentally, okay, you weren't prepared spiritually, you are going to basically have it a lot harder and you may fold. This is the reason why you need to lock in and be with around the right people, all right, that can help bring you through these times and help encourage you, okay? So let's go into this part. Did you know gauntlet comes from the Middle French, uh, gantelet, the diminutive of gant, meaning glove. Okay, gauntlet, that means severe trial ordeal, okay? Or double file of armed men. They used to have a men run through the gauntlet in the army and hit them, all right, as part of punishment. And that's what it's going to feel like during this time. You're going to feel like you're under some kind of punishment for being a believer. It tells you that in the scriptures, that those that speak uprightly were persecuted, all right? Because you believe in righteousness and you want to you want to walk in the righteous path, you are going to be attacked. Okay, is a different word that originates from Swedish "gata," meaning lane or way. Yeah, when you go through this way, the way, the truth, and life, the way of the Lord, the way of salvation, that path is like a gauntlet. Okay, 
It is a severe trial. It's going to test your faith. Okay? So you have to understand that this time that we're in, you know, I always say this is a tough time. Now, when you get through this, after years progress, depending on how long you've been listening or if this place keeps going, eventually they're going to give up. They're going to fold and they're going to stay back. Now, me being in this, you know, for for a long time, now I don't get no texts. I don't get no happy Thanksgiving. I don't get no happy birthday. I don't get no Merry Christmas and no New Year's because people know whether it's cousins, relatives that I grew up with, friends that I knew back in the day in the world uh, that may still have my phone number and send out the mass group texts. Some of them then, then remove me off that text that they send out every year for the so-called happy for the so-called New Year's when they send out that Happy New Year's or Merry Christmas. They know I'm not rocking with it. So now I don't get those anymore, but some of y'all, y'all still going to get that. Okay, some of y'all that actually have a significant other that's a non-believer that you're currently with and you're trying to not keep this, this probably could end your relationship. Or are you going to try to save your relationship by participating? Okay, that's the question that you're going to have to ask yourself. How far are you willing to go for this faith? So let's go into the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the book of the Apocrypha. Starting at verse 1, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Okay, so the Most High is putting you through fire. Okay, tells you in the scriptures in Matthew uh, that 3 and 11, that he was going to come and baptize not only with the Holy Ghost, but with fire. The baptism of the fire is that trial that's going to make you pure, like fine gold to be presented as acceptable unto the Lord. And one of those things you have to go through is going to be these holidays. You know, we're in Babylon the Great, right, where... You can practice any religion you want. You can worship any god or as many gods as you'd like. So we're in a place where people are in a great deception, including many of our own family members. And this is going to be part of your test. Believe it. It's going to be a part of your test. Okay? And you got to know how to respond. Sometimes they might have asked you why and have a sincere question. You got to let them know why. Be short and brief and to the point. Hey, I don't celebrate it because it commemorates the, the massacre of the natives. Oh, well, it's family time. That's what it means to us, to me. You say, you know what? That's just what it means to me. Family time can be spent any other time. The fact that it's being spent on Thursday, which includes turkey stuffing, you know, you know, pie, cranberry sauce, you know, that's just what it is. You know, depending on how deep you got to go. But some some of you are going to have to go that deep. Some of you are not going to have to go that deep. Your your family member your, might be like, okay, it is. He's not coming. That's all they're going to say. Some some of y'all y'all have it that easy. Others of y'all y'all don't. Some of y'all are getting harassed throughout the day because y'all not coming or asking you when you're going to come. Okay, they're going to try and guilt you. Oh, your grandmother, your aunt, or whoever. Oh, they really miss you. They really want to see you. They're going to try you, and they're going to keep trying you until you fold because they're going to believe you're going to fold. All right, because Satan is on them. To get to you. That's how it works. Same name popping out himself. He going to get on get on them to get to you. Okay. So again. For gold is tried in the fire. An acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him. And he will help thee. Okay. So you got to strive for the truth unto death. And the Lord right, will fight for thee. So if you believe in him, he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. So go not aside to that. Okay? Lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him. And your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. This is what you got to hope for. Okay, wait on him, wait for his mercy, believe in him, hope for good. Okay, 
ye that fear the Lord. Okay, because the time is going to come when all these people that were celebrating these things, they're going to be ashamed that they ever did. Okay, and they're going to know that somebody stood up and had integrity and believed and stood upon the word of the Lord. So you have to understand that this is your time to show yourself to be approved. Because somebody's got to stand up and be an example. There might be somebody in your family, okay, they may admire you standing up and maybe may take hold on what you believe in. You just never know. But even if they don't, at the end of the day, who are you pleasing? You're pleasing the most high. Okay, and that's what's important. This is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. And that's what they're doing. Many of these uh, places, you're going to any of these families, all right, they're, they're getting drunk, okay? They're getting high. Now, right now, you got many places around the, the country where people are actually, you know, killing each other, beating up each other, attacking each other. You're going to have a lot of things, evil things that are going to be going on in those places, in those houses, in those apartments where they're have, holding these festivities. Okay? You're going to see that stuff on the news. You're going to see, you know, people that are getting shot from these gatherings, from these things, because what happens is they set aside their differences for the sake of the hella days, but and then when they come together, those issues that they had with, among their family, among friends and things like that, they come back up to the surface when they have to come together for their hella days, because that's what they do. They'll have beef, but they'll set it aside because it's thanks killing. And then that beef or that disagreement is brought up and then it leads to violence. And that's what you're going to see on the news. You're going to see a bunch of news stories in all these various cities with people being killed. You got people getting uh, getting drunk, people, people, you know, offing themselves because that's also another thing that happens. People get so depressed and messed up being around their family that they end up taking their own you know, life. You know, people are going to be running off with their kids because they try and get together for the sake of their kids, even though they're not together anymore for Thanksgiving. And then there's going to be an argument. And then the, then the father is going to run off with the kid away from the mother because he never gets to see the kid except for around this time of the year. And then you're going to get them Amber Alerts all over the country about how some kid is kidnapped by somebody. And it usually just be their own father that just that just doesn't get to see them. You know, when you look at these stories, a lot of times, if you go back and look at it, you're going to notice that it's just an amber alert from a mother calling the police because of that, because the father took the took the uh, child away. You know, and they act like it's an actual true kidnapping, like it's America's most wanted or something like that. So with Matt Walsh or whatever his name is, like you, you that's what, that's what happens during these times. OK, you're also going to have people that are going to be drunk driving because they're going to be so messed up. They're going to be, they're going to drink excess of alcohol and they're going to get behind the wheel and they're going to basically cause accidents. This is the type of stuff that goes on around this year. That's just how that you know that the Most High is not dealing with this. Okay. It's a fake holiday celebrating uh, the genocide and the land theft, right? Of the so-called North American Indians. That's what this thing really is about. Okay. And every time you celebrate it, you're just showing yourself to the people that are oppressing you, that you ain't ready to get out of captivity and you love it. Okay? You love it. That's what they say. So you got to stand up and say that you're going to be the one that's going to step up in your family, in your household, and not celebrate it. To not celebrate any of these other holidays coming up. Okay? Because Christmas is the big doozy, man. Down right there is the one that that is really the fight of all fights when it comes to these holidays, man. So we will be, you know, of course, discussing that when the time permits as well. All right. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to speak evil of you. Now, let's go ahead and go to go down here. I'm going to go down to verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you 
as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partaker of Martiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad with also with exceeding joy. Okay? They may be glad with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Mashiach, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and Yahweh resteth upon thee. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Okay? So that's the good thing. Is that if you take partake in this suffering and you're reproached, right, for with ho holding up the standard of Yahweh Shai, you should be happy. Okay? Take it cheerfully. It's tough. But when you look back at it and you sit down, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be happy that you stood up for that for that time. You knowing that this is a trial of your faith. You're actually building up your faith to basically resist evil. Right, of the other things that they're going to be pushing on us in this society. Okay? And that's why he quoted this is really, the, you know, with exceeding joy, the fiery trial. Okay, that's why you see it here, you know, in Sirach chapter 2. Okay? So this is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth, I am come not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter-in-law against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Okay, and you got to remember, this is a statement that Yahweh Shai made, the variance within family, within the household. You know, do not love your, your mama or your daddy or your siblings more than you love the Most High, more than you love Yahweh Shai. You have to take up your cross and follow after him and bear, all right, that criticism, that hate, okay? Speaking of love and hate, we will go ahead and finish it off with 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the, in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Yahweh abideth forever. Okay? So we're doing the will of the Heavenly Father by standing up to this. The, the world, these people are passing away. This fashion in which they're doing, what I mean, the ways, this thanks killing that's going on, that they're celebrating, that's going to perish. That's going to be gone. There's going to be a time, in, there's going to be time when the kingdom set up is going to be done with. All these things that they're doing is actually coming to an end. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and any other wicked holiday, birthdays that they celebrate, Easter, July 4th, Halloween, all these things that they celebrate is passing away. But the will of the Lord is going to abide forever. These other things that he wants us to keep, those are going to abide forever. Okay? So hopefully, you know, this is edifying and encouraging to you, brothers and sisters. And again, I want to give all glory and praise to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.